Hey, what's going on YouTube? This EXO coming at you here with a complete tutorial on how to recone your NVX subwoofers. Now these methods can also be applied to pretty much any other woofer, but since we got these NVX, we're going to be mainly focusing on these guys. We're going to go and get some glue, bring you guys through the whole disassembling process, basically explain what a recone is, and just go along with the whole process. Hopefully you guys can learn something from this video, so let's go ahead and get down to it. So for starters, and any beginners that might be watching this video, let's go ahead and explain what a recone is. Uh, no. Not one of these. It's actually just anything that is soft and moving on your subwoofer. That's why they call it soft parts. So if you're going to place all the soft parts on your woofer, we call that recone kits in the car audio world. Hit me, baby. Right here. This guy came out of my Soundstream Triple X's. It has an eight layer coil. It has a dual spider. It has a paper cone. It has a foam surround and it has an aluminum former. Those are basically all you really parts that you gotta know of a woofer, and it also has the tinsel leaves that are sewn into the spiders. So right here is obviously an example of soft parts that went awry. We're not using these anymore. So let's go ahead and show you the good ones that we just got in the mail. Okay, so let's show you what a 12-inch recone kit looks like straight from the factory over there at MVX. Well, would you look at that, YouTubulus? Surprising me right there. I was gonna show you guys on how to make your own shims with pictures, but it looks like they actually already included this right with the kit. That's what that center piece of plastic is. That's why it goes all the way into the former like that. That just pretty much centers the coil inside the gap so you don't have any rubbing from left to right when the subwoofer's traveling at those high speeds up and down. So before I go ahead and start tearing this bad boy up, there's a lot of people out there probably wondering what the hell I'm doing this for? I heard NVX was a good company. What, did you blow the woofer already, XO? Well, no, that's not the case at all. I'm kind of just doing this video as a little demonstration to help out all the peeps who may have their own woofers out there, show them that they can recone their own woofers without a hitch. So just to prove it to you guys, I got the little DMM here. Let's go ahead and test the coils and see what we're running at. This is just to show that the woofer is still 100% functional and that we're doing this just for demonstration purposes. As you can see, we're resting at around 1.6 to 2 ohms. I'm talking in the room and there's some vibrations going on, so we're going to have some fluctuations. So let's go ahead and test the other coil just to prove it. And there we go, coil number two. Just to show that we're working with a 100% functional woofer and that nothing really went wrong in the first place. Alright, now let's get this bad boy open. With enough force, it should come up. Check it out, guys. We're getting some easy access here with some extreme force. And I'm just going to go ahead and shimmy it right around and the whole surround should come right up. We're just taking our finger going up around it and uh, you know, prying it right up. It'll make us a hell of a lot easier job when we have to go ahead and sand down the glue that may be left behind. And there we go. As you can see, there is still some buildup there, but it's a heck of a lot less than if we were gonna leave this whole thing right down and cut this off. It just gives us less to grab and more to do. So just a nice gentle pry and we're gonna go ahead and cut the spider right out. And now we have removed the old coil. And as you can see, this coil is damn near freaking immaculate, perfect. So now we got the basket and the motor assembly right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tape off the center of this, which is the gap. That's where the coil goes in and out from. So we need to make sure nothing falls in there so we don't hear any scratches or anything, you know, obstructs the way of that coil moving in and out. So let's get some tape. We got it all taped up. It doesn't need to be pretty. We're just gonna be removing it. So let's get the rest of this spider off, shall we? We're gonna probably need a wire brush and or just a little something to scrape off the excess with, but I'm gonna start with just the same blade that we've been using. Just like that. So there we go. Now the top spider is completely off and it does look like they have two landings for the spider. There is a little offset here just below it about a half inch so it gives a second platform. Okay, so now we're prying up the second spider here. Uh, did the same thing that we did with the first one. Uh, basically, just go ahead and take the whole thing up nice and clean. But it's not all the way clean. We're gonna have to go ahead and clean up this bit because the epoxies don't like to stick to anything that's dirty. All right, so we got the surround landing pretty much all sanded. There's still just a little bit of black, but that's only really inside seams. And if you take a look at the recone anyways, uh, the surround won't be going all the way over to the edges. It pretty much stops right where that line is. So it'll be just about perfect. All right, there's the first landing all pretty much taken care of.
All right, you two, with some uh, little minor touch-ups there, it looks like we got the majority of her sanded down so she'll get nice and stuck to the glue. And then really quickly, I kind of overlooked these. I'm just gonna go ahead and take these uh, terminals right off. So now let's go ahead and prepare for the next steps, which is getting our epoxies. All right, so we're here in Lowe's. We're gonna pick up the most easily accessible stuff that I know of. For this video, we're gonna use something right here. I think this is it. Nope, this is it right here. The 3,200 pound test right here. It mixes in through that right there. It'll be just great for our sub. Okay, we got our glue here. Now the first step will be to remove the tape that we applied, being careful not to let any of the shit that's stuck to the tape to fall back in. Doing a pretty good job so far. There we go. We're gonna do a little test bit here, so let's take our fresh recone. So imagine if there was glue down, then we'd always go ahead and press around the sides. Some people do use hand clamps or just a regular sub gasket or maybe even some clothespins. And now let's go ahead and apply our glues. Everything's ready to go. We're gonna try to work fast because this sets in five minutes. So let's, with the time on the clock, let's go ahead and get this started. I'm gonna go around one more time because the spiders are really important to me because you can't really get back in there again. Let's go up to the second landing here. This one is a little bit more narrow so we can get a bead almost around the whole thing. I gotta be a little more gentle here. I think I'm gonna have to maybe use another tube up on top. I'm gonna have to go back to the store there, YouTube. So I'm gonna do a nice, good, thick layer on the spiders because we're definitely not gonna have enough to go around the top for the surround. And now let's get our recon kit. Get her ready, line her up on the size that we want to use for the terminals, we're going to use right over here. So let's get her down, huh? Here she goes, you two. We're going to get her centered in. Push her down nice, just like that. She's in. Okay, so right now what I just did is took my fingers and just kind of pushed along the sides here and made it go nice and firm into the landing itself. So as you can see, the glue kind of squirted up just a little bit on the edges right there. Now I'm gonna actually get a little bit dirty with some gloves and go ahead and even it out along the edges so it looks like a factory bead. Okay, so there's the difference, guys. As you can see, it's more evenly distributed around the whole part of the landing and uh, just it looks a lot better and it will be a lot better of a contact. Now that we have the soft parts set where they need to be, we're just gonna go around and uh, stick these right little mini clamps in between the spokes just to give it a nice even pressure to make sure that the spiders don't come up on us. So there we go, we got the spiders all firmly tacked down. We're just gonna wait for the epoxy to, you know, set up and then we should be all good. All right, so it looks like our epoxy is all dried up, so let's go ahead and remove these. Nice, sometimes they do stick down a little bit, but it seems like we put it in just the right place. So I've got some little terminals here. They're not the best looking, but they're gonna do the job. I really wish I could have picked up something different than these, but the hardware store, that's all they got. Check this out, guys. B, B, woo, ow! I just rested my thumb on the freaking ah! I just rested my thumb right there. Sweet, so I got this little second pair of hands here, guys. It really helps when you're doing small projects like this. We're just gonna get this all pre-warmed on us. Get it ready to soak up the solder. And then go ahead and just apply some in here. Hopefully you can see what's going on. Just like that, let it absorb and then let go. Now I'm gonna just put a little bit on, a little bit more on. Let's give it a little cap. And don't worry if it gets a little brown, that brown stuff usually will, will, will wipe white, excuse my speech impediments, will usually wipe right off. Try that one five times fast, huh? See how I just sucked right in there, YouTubulus? So I'm gonna give it another little absorption. Let it eat it right in. And then we'll just give it a little topper right here. All right guys, now that we got the tinsel leads all soldered up, we can go ahead and apply the terminal that came with it. Just take a little plug and play installation here. It comes with a plastic piece. So let's go ahead and just shove that right on there. Put this one on first. Right here. Put this one on second. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab uh, a little tool so I can tighten these guys right up. Okay guys, so we got them all tightened down and it looks like it might be just something that is a usual occurrence over here. The other one, a uh, little peg there kind of just broke off on me, but it's no harm, no foul because the threads, you know, they're not affected anyway by it. So we got our glue all queued up, everything else is all taken care of and we're ready to, you know, address our surrounds here and then take the shim out, do the dust cap. What I'm gonna do here is just I'm gonna peel up the edge 
go right around it, lay my bead, gradually go around and just stick, stick it right in. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna show you what most people will do uh, their first time doing it. So let's go ahead and do that method. Push this right up. Push around on the edges here, just get the glue tacked in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and use these clamps right here. This should do just fine. Well, there she is, guys, pretty much all clamped up. You can see we got a whole hell of a lot on there. And like I said, there's other ways that you can do this too with the subwoofer gasket, clothes pins, and uh, you know, there's other ways that you can do it too. But I'm just showing you ways that I think that most people are going to do it because you can pick these up right at Home Depot or the dollar store. Now we're gonna be uh, safe to remove these guys. Should come right up without a hitch. There it is, guys. I can feel that it. it's all nice and glued. Oh yeah, there's no way that's coming out. So now let's focus our attention down to these baggies which have dust caps in them and uh, get them down there as well and then we'll have a finished subwoofer ready for testing. Bum ba da bum. Bam, this is the first dust cap here, which we're gonna stick directly on top of the former. Okay, so I got the glue applied, guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it right on top. Bam, diddlish, bam. Let this dry up and we should be good to go. All right, now it's time for the last dust cap here. Go around with it some goop. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lay a bead in here. I'm gonna put it down over here so I don't get the sub dirty. All right, guys, I don't know if I was just recording or not, but I basically just put glue on that cap, on this dust cap, and now I'm putting weight down on her. All right, so there she is, guys. Freshly recone. Go ahead and plug these right in, just like that. Check out how we're doing down here. Looks like we're right about where we're supposed to be. I'm gonna stop talking. There we go, guys, dual two ohm whooper. Let's get the gasket over here and get her on. There it is, guys. That's what they call a job well done, right there. NVX Recone, caps all in there, looking good. What do you guys think? First one down, second one, here we come. this we got all the terminals off since down on our second woofer let's get a little rotation here then we'll get our multimeter out and do a little readout on this guy too so here's what we're working with everything's all cinched down tight as a muscle so we got our multimeter sitting right there let's go ahead and read out the impedance of these coils see how we did everybody should be hovering around the 1.6 to 1.8 mark there it is you two this but for right now, guys, this is pretty much all we can do since our house amplifier is kind of not powerful enough to run this for a test. But we know everything's functional. So, all right, guys, things are looking good. Make sure you check out MBX at MBX.com. There'll be a link in the description here for a special campaign that I'm a part of. Be a little discount for you guys. There'll be a link to Sonic and MBX. Sorry if the lighting's horrible, guys, but we're doing what we can here. This is EXO signing out. Until the next video, stay tuned, guys.